도서관 세계를 가다 글로벌 리더 리더 아, 글로벌 리더가 말하는 리더십은 어, 잔스포츠 창업자이시나요? 어, 2011년까지 p r 총괄을 역임하시고 공식적으로 은퇴하신 뒤에 어, 지금 현재는 그 잔스포츠 공식 홍보대사로 활동 중에 계십니다. 전미 아웃도어 산업협회 이사이시며 빅스티 마운티어 협회 이사장 아, 협회 이사장이신 잔스포츠 창업자 스킵 요엘을 소개합니다. 큰 박수 받아주세요. Just a sec, Don. Okay, good, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay uh, hello, students. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. We're going to uh, share some stories from uh, Jan Sports history and all around the world. And, uh, Hopefully, maybe at the end, we'll have a little time. I have a few products I'm going to give away, so everybody in the audience will have opportunity to uh, get a product. And uh, so in uh, 1967, uh, we started making uh, packs for the uh, outdoors and uh, for backpackers and uh, mountaineers in uh, Seattle, Washington. And there was three of us, and uh, my cousin and myself, and we needed somebody to sew the bags. And Murray was dating a girl who had a home sewing machine, and she was real good with patterns. And her name was Jan. And he said, Jan, if you marry me, I'll name the company after you. So <laughs> that's where the name uh, Jansport came from. And uh, the three of us started off uh, making packs for climbers and uh, mountaineers. A uh, quick story, in uh, 1970, we were selling a bookstore at the University of Washington, and um, they had a sports shop uh, selling tennis, alpine gear, and backpacking gear. And uh, the buyer called me one day and said, Skip, because it rains so much in Seattle, students are buying your hiking packs and putting their books inside. So he said, you ought to put something on the bottom. So we put some vinyl at first and then some leather and... Uh, that really started uh, the day pack book bag business. Before that, everybody carried their books under their arm. And uh, we were the first to put a zipper in a pack and uh, started selling uh, college bookstores in the Pacific uh, Northwest. And today, that's obviously one of our uh, biggest businesses. We had learned a lesson. We had a uh, call from a distributor in San Francisco and they wanted to carry our packs, so Murray and I thought we would make our first road trip to San Francisco, and we were hippies back in those days, and uh, we decided to clean up our act, and one of the few times you'll see me in a suit and tie, and um, we uh, heard Janis Joplin was playing at the uh, Fillmore in San Francisco, so we were anxious to go make this trip, so we sold some packs to the uh, distributor, uh, went to an outdoor store in Berkeley, and they kicked us out because we looked too, uh, uh, too uh, corporate. And so I learned a lesson from that to always be yourself and uh, be authentic. But we saw Janis Joplin and uh, came back. It was a really good uh, road trip. One of the other lessons I learned early on was uh, understanding your customer. And this is a very small retail store we had in our original factory. And uh, we would get hardcore climbers come and they would tell us what they were wanting. And uh, 
So understanding your customer is still today is very important uh, for all the young people at uh, Jansport. We would also, another value that we kind of added to our brand was we would test all our prototypes and all the product ourselves uh, personally and we'd go out on, uh, this is Jan and I on a bad hair day actually. <laughs> <laughs> but we would go out and test product and uh, come back and improve on that product and uh, sometimes it's good to uh, take some risk and you're going to make some mistakes, but that's okay because you learn from your mistakes. And um, I had a dog that I decided to make a whole bunch of Jansport frame packs and saddlebags and um, I, we made a hundred and only sold about ten. And so that was not successful, but I learned from that experience and uh, you will make mistakes in your future, but uh, you learn from your mistakes, and uh, so that's always can be a uh, positive. Another interaction with a uh, famous climber in the Northwest who uh, started, he owned a guide service on Mount Rainier, and he asked me to come on his uh, first winter seminar. And uh, so we trained for six months and went to uh, Mount Rainier, a uh, big mountain of uh, 14,000, uh, 410 uh, feet. During the winter it gets much uh, snow and we would spend uh, uh, hopefully just five days up there but we ended up staying longer because of big snowstorms uh, every day and didn't make the summit and that year it set the world's record for snowfall 1133 inches which uh, is a lot of snow and uh, we came down on compass bearings and uh, our car is totally buried. Murray is sitting on top of our uh, Jansport delivery van there that we had to get uh, dug out. And so I went back that summer and then climbed to the uh, summit for the first time and thought, you know, with our business, maybe I can get the guides interacting with our product and helping us design product. and. Uh, so I signed up the famous climber Lou Whitaker as one of our uh, athletes and we started uh, doing a climb for retailers all over the United States selling our products. And um, today we have uh, uh, retailers and uh, friends uh, that come from Europe and Asia and uh, all over the world to still climb on the Jansport uh, Mount Rainier uh, dealer climb. And, uh, our partner here in Korea, Joe, which is standing in the back, uh, came uh, three years ago uh, to climb on uh, Mount Rainier with a, uh, one of his customers. This uh, beautiful mountain, and uh, we'd really started Jansport because we had a passion for the outdoors, and uh, after college we thought if we could build a business that fit our passion, it would be a win-win, and that was our... Uh, vision and motivation uh, back then. It's always about having fun. That's a big part of the uh, Jansport culture that uh, is still very important to me to uh, have fun at everything you do. So in your future, uh, do something that you have a passion for and something that also that you're going to have a lot of fun with. And in that way, it won't really uh, seem like uh, work. <laughs> few shots here, Mount Rainier, a beautiful mountain, and uh, you actually have some very nice mountains in uh, Korea here. <coughs> we also had another uh, event that really changed. Um, we were a small uh, company with uh, limited distribution in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, we were asked to go on a weekend trip for a Seattle newspaper. Uh, weekend edition, they hired a photographer and uh, we would go to the North Cascades. The photographer over the weekend took only one picture of our frozen mustaches. And uh, the first night we were had deep snow on cross country skis. Our tents, all the A-frame tents were uh, A-frames. And our pole was whirling around, the zipper broke. We couldn't keep our stove lit. Jan thought she was going to die, and uh, we came out the next day in uh, very deep snow and uh, 
came back and said, gee, let's make a really good tent. And so we thought about the Eskimos igloo and designed the very first dome tents and uh, made three prototypes, put one up on Mount Rainier with uh, my friend Lou Whitaker and um, ended up a buyer from REI said, I think I can sell those. And so he gave us an order for 50, and it was a big production, but we made the 50, delivered them, and without any advertising, the products just sold immediately. And uh, everybody all over the United States started contacting us to get these uh, Jansport uh, dome tents. So two values that has always been uh, part of my philosophy is... Uh, innovation and quality and um, the quality that uh, we put in the product for mountaineers uh, we wanted to go down to the everyday day pack which probably gets used harder 365 days of the year than some of our uh, climbing packs so those two values uh, very important we also in those days wanted to bring a little fashion and uh, style to our products besides being very uh, functional. So we started adding color and uh, made it a little bit more uh, interesting. I'm going to give you, show you a couple uh, expeditions that uh, we used from a marketing standpoint, a product development standpoint. Um, there was a lot of great values that would come out of an expedition and we went to uh, Everest in 1984 and uh, went to uh, Laza here, the capital of Tibet, which lies at uh, 12,000 feet. This is the Dalai Lama's uh, Patala. And then we would start our venture uh, into uh, Everest. And we had a team of uh, 14 climbers. And uh, we learned to take a Polaroid. Uh, part of the adventure in life is not always about just making the summit. It's your travels to and from and the different people and the different cultures you meet and uh, that make a trip very uh, special. So you don't necessarily have to climb the big high mountains, but uh, you can gain so much out of uh, traveling the world and uh, having different experiences. Tibetan, the Tibetan people are very friendly. It's uh, really... Uh, enjoyable for us, and then we finally reached uh, Everest Base Camp. We had uh, one team member uh, that would make the uh, summit, but uh, in using uh, some of my marketing skills, uh, raising money for an expedition is always a challenge, and uh, I went to uh, a bakery in Seattle, and I said, you need to buy a yak for $500 and support our Northwest climbing team. And the owner of the store said, what am I going to do with a big hairy animal? And I said, no, no, we'll uh, put your name on a plaque, take a picture, and then I'll bring it back, put it in a frame, and you can put it in your business. And so we ended up raising $25,000 uh, selling yaks. But I learned a valuable lesson from that, to have your story together. So no matter what field you students are in, uh, you know, having your uh, story uh, can be very uh, valuable in putting some thought and preparation into that in uh, your uh, future. Also, working with the media can be uh, very invaluable. A lot of times there's uh, uh, more value in working with the uh, media than having ads in magazines or um, on uh, social uh, internet that I had a friend that walked across America in the 70s, took him five years, but he used Jansport product. And I asked Peter to come on this book, on this trip, and he wrote a book uh, called Across China, which was uh, a very popular book in the US for uh, uh, a couple of years. One team member made the uh, summit, and um, think about in a lot of your future occupations and jobs, uh, you can work, you can accomplish so much more as a, uh, as a team than you can as one individual. And uh, Jansport, for example, is just not Skip Yow. It's many young women, many young men, and uh, all working together in unity that really help 
our brand and the products and uh, the growth of our uh, business. So being a team player is uh, very important. We'll give you one more expedition uh, around the world uh, to Ketchenjunga. It's the world's third highest mountain. You have Everest, K2, and then Ketchenjunga. It lies in the um, northeast corner of uh, Nepal and on the Tibet border and hadn't been climbed by an American team. And this is 1989, so this is our goal is to be the first American team. But we would also, at Jansport, develop all the product, um, special product for the climb that um, many of the design features then would come down into our uh, everyday uh, product. And we would learn uh, from that and always try to be an authentic leader in uh, the different packs that uh, we would make. This is our uh, packing up before we left, 125 boxes. Uh, 60 pounds to a box would be shipped from Seattle to Calcutta and then would be brought into our base camp. And uh, one year later, our budget was $180,000. We uh, raised all that money, which was a lot of work, and put all our all gear together and uh, flew to Kathmandu. And then uh, we would uh, charter two small Grumman airplanes. It would save us eight days of walking into Ketchenjunga and uh, it would cut off eight days. And we're flying by uh, Everest here. We'll be about uh, 70 miles from uh, Everest as the crow flies. And uh, this was the toughest part of the uh, climb for me. We landed on a cliffside at 3,000 feet. And when they did the flyby in this very short grass runway, we saw a wrecked plane at the bottom of the cliff. And uh, so for me, that was the scariest part of the climb. And uh, but we would start a 120-mile walk uh, into Ketchenjunga, and uh, it really helps you acclimatize, and uh, it uh, also gives you the experience of meeting a lot of the local people and the different cultures and the different uh, foods. And uh, something that's going to be very important in your lives, we wanted to practice really good sustainability. And uh, sustainability is... Uh, opportunity for many young people like you for many companies in the future is even on a global basis we're going to have to uh, really be a lot more concerned about our uh, uh, activities with the environment and uh, so we have propane here that we didn't burn any of the local uh, timber and we would also bring everything out that uh, we brought in This basket is a Jamsburg pack of the future. We'll see if you can uh, sell those, Andy. This, uh, I always show this for the macho guys, that uh, these two ladies are 16 and they could uh, carry 60 pounds as well as any guy. So um, the people obviously in this area are very hardy, very tough, and we paid uh, three dollars a day and uh, in this area their average income was about two hundred and forty dollars a year so the uh, expeditions and everything was uh, really important they'd get mom dad sister brother uh, everybody involved we had our uh, last little camp we were waiting for those boxes uh, to show up and uh, we found out that they had been, our truck was on the border shut down. And so uh, you're always going to face some adversity in everything you do, but you need to overcome those problems and work through them. And uh, we got our truck across the uh, closed border. And uh, for $11,000, we hadn't budgeted this, but uh, our team member who was with our truck got... Uh, a helicopter to make three runs in with uh, only 75 and 125 boxes. So he had to make some very tough decisions and uh, he took out all our whiskey, so that was probably good and, uh, at the, uh, for our climb. Real quick story, I named my dog that you saw in the earlier slide, uh, Gambu, after my Sherpa friend. And when he found out 
uh, that he said, why did Skip do that? That is not of honor in my society to be named after a dog. And so when this dog followed us into base camp, he goes to my friend Lou and he says, Lou, this dog's name is Skip. And so <laughs> Skip became our mascot and would uh, eat all the scraps. And uh, we left him with the uh, family uh, on the way out. This is our base camp and home for over two months. And uh, you ladies probably wouldn't like this idea, but we went uh, two and a half months without a bath or a shower. And so your hair gets a pretty funny texture to it. <laughs> a lot of avalanches would peel off every day, so we would go um, very steep on uh, Ketchenjunga to where that snow uh, didn't build up and uh, where we had those avalanches. One of the other values I'd learned from Lou uh, many years earlier is follow through with your commitments. And we would have never raised all the funds and services uh, if we hadn't followed through on past uh, climbs and events and promotions. And so that is a really strong value to uh, keep in mind to follow through with your uh, commitments. And that has really helped me in uh, my future. We'll just go here quickly. Uh, where uh, some days you're in your tent reading a book because it's storming, and uh, this is a poster that we did for the uh, outdoor stores. And then on May 18th, we had three team members of 27,000. They left for the summit, made the uh, summit first American team. Three days later, we had three more on the uh, summit, so we we're the uh, first American team on the world's third highest. Uh, Mountain. Everybody came back safe and sound. Uh, very successful uh, expedition. This up in this uh, basket here, uh, base camp was 17,000 feet, and the night before I heard a baby crying. And uh, right in that basket is a five month old baby. And uh, this lady has a 50 pound box, and she's going to go 10 miles across two rivers. and. Uh, just amazing how tough and hardy. So we paid this lady a whole bunch of extra money. We were uh, really impressed. I started the uh, climb at 150 pounds, and uh, because you're exerting so much, I lost uh, 30 pounds. And so I thought a good business in the future, if you could get people up high, would be a good diet camp. <laughs> Just quickly, a few of my uh, favorite areas around the world and uh, all these experiences and expeditions always have an influence on uh, Jansport and our culture in a very uh, positive way. This is uh, New Zealand, uh, they call it the Milford Trek, the uh, finest walk in the world and uh, it's 35 miles up over a 5,000 uh, foot pass and just really beautiful uh, scenery and uh, very nice uh, country. And then you end up and uh, get picked up by a boat. Something I tell people, they say, what's your favorite climb? And they're all different and they're all, you know, favorite. But one of my special trips was to uh, Africa. We wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. And, uh, but we spent seven days in uh, the Masi Mara Game Preserve uh, viewing the wildlife, and um, there's nowhere in uh, the world that you can see the wildlife like you do in Africa and up close, and there's lions and cheetahs, and um, we had wildebeest in migration, thousands of them, and uh, we would go out in those Land Rovers three times a day, and uh, just very special uh, experience, and then we... Uh, Climbed uh, Kilimanjaro, not a technical climb, but it's very high in altitude, 19,300 feet. And uh, very little snow, though, now in Kilimanjaro. They believe, because of global warming, that uh, by 2020 there will be no uh, snow on uh, this mountain. Always having a little fun. This is Mombasa afterwards, and uh, we went over the ocean. Uh, can I see a show of hands? How many of you students know where Bhutan is? 
uh, just a few in the very back. Yeah, it's uh, just below Tibet, next to Burma and Nepal, and a uh, very special country that uh, they haven't allowed a lot of people in there. It's the last all Buddhist country in the world. And uh, this is the uh, Tiger's Nest, probably one of the most famous monasteries in the world. It's up on that cliffside, as you can uh, see up here at the very top, just an amazing uh, piece of architecture. And the monks live up there for uh, three years at a time. And the Burmese people, uh, very happy, very healthy. They uh, build their own houses, raise their own uh, crops, and uh, they don't have TVs and cell phones. and. Uh, they don't wear Western clothes, and uh, a very uh, special uh, culture that the king doesn't want their culture to change rapidly. So uh, they're very slow in a lot of the things that they're allowing as far as growth in the uh, country of Bhutan. And then we came out and uh, went to my uh, friend Gambu's uh, training area here on the right, where he had trained uh, soldiers from uh, India. We have a few, uh, 350 uh, national parks in the United States and we'll uh, take new product and we'll invite five people from the media and we'll spend five days with them and they'll have some of our new product and uh, they'll get to understand the people at Jansport and uh, so it's a great way to intertwine your business but also have fun uh, while you're doing it. So we always pick different special places to uh, have an adventure uh, with the uh, media on these trips. Some of my favorite places uh, was last summer for the fourth time I was in the Greek islands and uh, really uh, get inspired uh, in uh, boating around the uh, Mediterranean. This is a picture I took on our 84 Everest expedition when we started into uh, Everest, uh, Great Wall. We have a business in uh, the United States where we make sweatshirts and t-shirts for uh, college bookstores. And these are just a few examples of the uh, bookstores. And uh, that business is based in uh, Appleton, Wisconsin. This I learned, a, uh, I've been talking to our partner about this uh, nonprofit uh, called Big City Mountaineers. And uh, it's been very important in the success of Jansport to be able to give back and uh, give back in different ways. And so one of the nonprofits I'm heavily involved with now for 18 years, I sit on the board of directors, is Big City Mountaineers. It's youth that has been in trouble They've been court appointed into a youth group, but they've earned the right to go on an eight-day trip with us in the outdoors. And most of these young ladies, young boys, have uh, been on cement their whole lives. And uh, they come from broken backgrounds, no father, very typical. And they have drugs, gangs, you know. But they're not necessarily bad kids. They've just had really bad uh, home influence. So. Big City Mountaineers, we take them on an eight-day experience, and uh, it's one-to-one -one ratio, and we have a program that really helps turn their lives around, and they teach them to a lot of the skills of the outdoors and how to work together as a team, how to uh, navigate, and we sit down one-on-one -on -one and listen to their story and some of their problems, and. Uh, and given some of their opportunities in life. So um, we are able to also, I was able to get many people in the outdoor industry, uh, my fellow comrades, some of the competitors uh, involved in this uh, nonprofit, uh, Big City Mountaineers. This is some of our early advertising. This is uh, Jan's face. And that's my face, but not our bodies. And uh, so, Everything you kind of do sometimes, you know, think out of the box a little bit and uh, be creative and not necessarily follow, you know, what everybody else is uh, doing. And this would be our magazine ads, our catalogs, and uh, 
people would wonder where we got the boat, but these are old photos from the 1890s, and uh, it would go through a process in those days before Photoshop of about six different uh, steps. We did a uh, poster for the outdoor stores. This is a catalog cover, but the only thing on the poster was um, the Jansport logo on the bottom, and everybody thought we were a rock band. <laughs> Kissing llama, one of my favorite uh, hobbies is uh, popcorn, and uh, I'm also a big uh, organic uh, gardener, uh, fly fishing, and uh, this is, if you come and climb with us on Mount Rainier, this is how we eat up there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is my uh, mentor, uh, uh, Lou Whitaker, and uh, something for... Uh, you students to think about is uh, you can really get a lot of knowledge and gain a lot of experience from older people and uh, to sometimes really get in touch and have contact with uh, people they can really be beneficial in your uh, future so Lou was uh, my mentor and taught me so many things about the mountains but it really helped me back in my everyday life and my everyday uh, business and so him being a mentor how many of you know Chuck Norris? No, no, maybe not. He's a famous actor in the, the United States. It says, an outdoor dealer not uh, stocking enough frame packs needs to be taught a lesson. Chuck Norris is Skip Yow. This is one of my uh, favorite 30th anniversary posters. It says, it wasn't so unusual to have a vision back then. What's amazing is we remember it. We do a fundraiser at one of our trade shows uh, every year for the nonprofits, and um, also in your environment, making it a uh, fun place. We have a day where you bring your dog to work, and uh, so I'm giving away prizes to the best dressed dogs. <laughs> Everybody likes that day when you bring your dog to work, and uh, we have a day where you bring your kids to work, and so they understand what you're. Uh, doing so it's all part of um, making fun we have a uh, lifetime warranty uh, on our product and that's part of the success of the Jamsport brand is always making a very quality product so people get very attached to their day packs and book bags and uh, sometimes they need a zipper repair or something and they'll send it back to us so we send them this communication and um, tell them we have their pack, it's at camp doing zipper races, and uh, make it a fun form of uh, communication. This is a Volkswagen bus that we used on our 40th uh, anniversary, and um, I don't know, Andy, did we bring any books at all? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to give away a couple uh, copies of my book, uh, The Hippie Guide to Climbing the Corporate Ladder and Other Mountains. A little bit about the Jansport uh, uh, personality. Uh, it's uh, we have kind of a resistible spirit. Uh, we have a purpose, and we're uh, free. It um, our architecture of product. Obviously, most people know us for our day pack book bags, but we do collegiate and travel and career and uh, performance products of the uh, outdoors. We. Uh, also tier our distribution and so we have three levels of different distribution that uh, certain products go to these each uh, tiers you students are actually uh, 18 to 24 is our target market that we are most always interested in your needs and what you're doing and so that shifts down you'll see Gensport anytime you see uh, our social media or advertising is always geared at the 18 to 24 college uh, student because then it goes down and shifts up. And um, Some of the influences of your particular market. Um, one of the things I'm always proud of uh, that Jansport is an authentic company. We come with a 
the uh, heritage of the outdoors, but we also today are very progressive in um, making contemporary features for today's lifestyle. So when I started the business, there was no laptops or cell phones, and uh, today, of course, we have products that cater to, you know, the different electronic uh, needs. So you're constantly changing and you constantly have to innovate. Uh, you can never <coughs> rest on your uh, laurels. We, in several ways, how we reach our uh, consumers is uh, through uh, lectures at college, just like I'm doing uh, now, kind of telling our uh, heritage story, uh, through our nonprofit work with like Big City Mountaineers and some of the other nonprofits we're involved with. Uh, music is a big part of our culture. We uh, go to many music festivals and sponsor uh, music festivals, and so that's a creative way to uh, interact with uh, uh, people in your uh, age group. I think we're, Andy, how are we doing on time to show the uh, story? Is that next on this roll, do you think? This also worked with uh, Boy Scouts uh, quite a bit in the United States. And uh, if I go to the next, oops. Oh. You can start the film tab. Space up above was uh, empty. The bottom was my uncle's uh, business, Northwest Park Rebuilders, which is a transmission shop, and they uh, rebuilt uh, torque converters. And then uh, upstairs was one big open space, except for a small area for the retail shop. So we thought if we could start a business that uh, fit our passion of the outdoors, backpacking, and uh, climbing, it'd be a win win. And we needed somebody to sew the bags. And Murray was dating this girl, and she had a home sewing machine, and she was real good with patterns, and her name was Jan. And he said, Jan, if you marry me, I'll name the company after you. So that's what he <laughs> did. Skip and his cousin, and they were totally funky. They would do ads where they would dress up in tuxedos and pull up to these mansions and then put, like, Native American. I mean, it was just wild, really, really avant-garde stuff, actually. I thought these guys got to be cool. The three of them thought they were, they were really cool at that time. And they were. But they not only uh, looked the part, they dressed the part, they acted the part. And I think they even would take big trips through the West just so they could be those people. There was a little bit of irreverence in us, a little bit of uh, wildness sometimes. So they were definitely a lot of fun. And, uh, that's something I think from those early days that have carried me through all of the years is, uh, you know, make sure you have a lot of fun with what you're doing and uh, it won't seem like work. Peter 
Jim Jenkins was at uh, a small college in upstate New York, and I really didn't know what to do. I was upset with America, so I didn't have any money, and my grandmother wouldn't loan me the money to buy a motorcycle. So then somehow I segued into, I'm going to walk across America, and I walked from New York, Upper New York State, down to New Orleans, and that took me about a year and a half. And the pack I had completely disintegrated, <coughs> and it wasn't very well made, and I actually broke the metal tubing because it's just rubbing against me and stuff, and, and the, the, you know, just different things started breaking. So I started doing some research, and I found out about Jansport. And so Peter got in touch with me and said he'd like to uh, use one of our D3 frame packs in one of our uh, dome tents. So I just got these big boxes. It was very exciting. Well, structurally, you know, you can see how this curves with the curvature of your spine, which was one of the brilliant designs that, that Murray came up with. You know, I, I carried everything that I needed was right in here. I mean, it was just, I mean, this zipper was so that I could send this back and tell Skip to fix it, but I'm not going to. Ended up coming to the end of the walk, and, uh, you know, we just became friends from there. You know, that was back in, in 1979 or so. We... We took a bunch of trips together. I mean, I, um, you know, Skip invited me on the, the Everest trip. Uh, Seattle people have this kind of rich, slow voice, you know, and they, they all sound like that. This is Abigail, the night bird, you know, they have this like real mellow sound. And so Skip calls me one day, and I'm in Tennessee in my office, and he's like, Hey, Peter, how you doing? And I'm like, good, Skip, what's up? How's the kids? Uh, great, you know, how's your dog? Good. Hey, you want to go to climb Mount Everest? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, Lou Whitaker is definitely a uh, legend. He's been the leader of many expeditions in the uh, Himalayas. Lou's uh, first expedition to uh, Everest from the Tibet side in 82, uh, he wanted to make a tent that would really withstand some uh, adverse weather, so we made and developed, in conjunction with Lou and the guides, the uh, Jansport China Everest tent. And uh, when Lou arrived on uh, Everest, one of their first days on the mountain, they had winds close to 100 miles an hour. And, uh, and Lou was so happy because the tents just held up. They were like bomb shelters. So that was really the seed of uh, that particular tent design being used on future expeditions. I've led uh, the first successful climb of the north side with a team. And uh, after the many trips on Mount Rainier with Skip, I knew he'd be good. 20 mule team made it to the top 100%. All right. Skip. We need compatibility. We need uh, strength. Need uh, uh, various talents. After two attempts, we got one person to summit. But as team efforts, so we say if one makes it, then we all are successful because that one wouldn't have made it without the rest of us. So it's a team effort. And uh, on that team, why we've uh, picked the best people we could pick. And that's one reason why I picked Skip. Peter and I were walking through the bazaar one day in Laza, and uh, the Dalai Lama's Patala sits at 12,000 feet overlooking the bazaar, and I had my uh, shirt off, and uh, before long I had 200 people circled around me feeling the hair on my chest, and, uh, <laughs> my long hair, and I knew what it's like to be the monkey in the zoo. And Peter took a uh, photo of that, and uh, I decided to put it on the back cover of my book is a pretty unique experience. We we just have had just amazing times over the years. We decided to have an impromptu party at base camp. Broke out the bone box. To the amusement of the Smith Yak, the American organized an impromptu celebration. <laughs> say the veneer of civilization falls off when you're up high and you're cold and you're hungry. And you can tell the true merit of an individual. And uh, it's nice to get a, a testing ground like that. And 
and you know for sure when you come back down what the caliber of the guy is. It, it was probably interesting for uh, me coming from uh, western Kansas, uh, Grainfield, all the way to Everest, the biggest mountain in the uh, world, but uh, I uh, worked hard to live that dream. Yeah, I don't think uh, we ever had any idea that Jansport uh, from those early days would uh, become a worldwide brand that uh, I see all over the world. Our very first order was uh, REI, and we were selling uh, them a child's frame pack because nobody mm -hmm. made one at the time. Uh, Ten was a big order. It was 1970, in the fall, at University Bookstore. I worked in a sport shop, and Skip had a hair about down to here, which was a little ahead of his time. The uh, sports shop would sell Alpine skis, backpacking, and <laughs> tennis. And Skip uh, came in peddling his little backpacks, his little day packs, the Asper day packs. Ed Bourbon, the buyer, called me one day. He said, uh, Skip, because it rains so much here in Seattle, the students are uh, buying their day packs and putting their books inside. Why don't you put some on the bottom? And so uh, put some uh, uh, cheesy vinyl at first and then later on leather. And uh, he told his buddies in Idaho and Oregon, so slowly those uh, day packs started being, being sold in college bookstores. You know, when you think about Skip, he's sort of like our, the Paul Newman of our industry. About 15 companies came together and said, you know what, we really don't have any group out there that is working together, the collaborative place where we can meet that understands our values, comes from our values. Those formative meetings created the Outdoor Industry Association. Everyone knows the really important role that he's played in the association and the formation. He knows that he's sort of a, a godfather figure here for us. I talk about Skip as a guy who quietly makes noise. He, he's not a guy that um, is up there in front of the group yelling and screaming as the cheerleader or the commander that you, know, you go into battle with. But he's the guy that's always there, a great listener, and he's the guy you ought to be listening to when someone else is talking. For well, three years we've had the Jasper seminar in this compound. I recently had the pleasure of being able to climb in the dance court park, uh, climb that they do uh, with Rick and uh, Skip and Lou started. It's an indoctrination of how a group works and a techniques of how to climb and how to get out of the events and how to survive in the mountains. Lou was the ideal person really to test our product and uh, put it through all the uh, different uses and give us back feedback on how to do it might improve on the product, what worked, what didn't work. At the end of the uh, transport seminars, we'd have a big party, and uh, Lou would invite everybody over to his house, and got 38 people in the hot tub all in the public naked. And so, that was a pretty wild experience. <laughs> Skip has taken more people outside than anyone I know. I think that transporting in general, may have introduced more people in the outdoors than any company in the world. Skip particularly walks that talk. Skip also has been incredibly uh, active in Big City Mountaineers. And Big City Mountaineers is a group that goes in to urban communities and introduces kids who haven't had that outdoor experience. And he tape brings them to the outdoors. And he personally leads those missions. And so one of the things that um, Skip incorporated into our program in the early days was having Jansport sew um, these summit flags. And uh, the summit flags, uh, at the end of the trip, all the teams sign them. So if you walk into our corporate headquarters now, there's a room that has these flags hanging from the ceiling, and there are just hundreds of flags. And it's neat when a team comes back, um, one of the first things they'll often do is go through that room and and try to find their flag from five or six years ago. Even though our kids are only going to the, 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 the top of a peak in the Sierras, it might as well be Everest to them. We have a saying that they leave no kid inside, leave no child inside, like leave no child behind. Leave no child inside, let's get them out into the outdoors. Skip is good with that too, with uh, big city mountaineering and the different uh, events that uh, he participates in. He's uh, sprinkling uh, the seed has been thrown it as far as wide, and he's done it as long as I've ever done.
He just loved being in the business because he loved the business. He wasn't in it really for the money. He did it because he loved it. Skip to somebody who really encourages you to do what you love, love what you do, and then share it with others. So he's been an inspiration, I'm sure, to a lot of people. He's not me, one of these me, me, me people. He's more like you, you, you. There's a humility in how you treat people. There is a respect in how you treat people. There is an authenticity in how you treat people. You know, he's a people person. The reason he does what he does is he loves getting out there. He loves meeting people, seeing people that he's known for 40 years. If I could lead a life that's half as uh, rich as his is in, in both what he has done and how he has impacted people, I would be a very fortunate man. I was a race man that uh, don't fit in, a race that can't stand still. So they break the heart of Kith and Kim, and they roam the world as well. They roam the floods, they roam the plains, and they roam the mountain crest. And theirs is the curse of the gypsy blood, and they don't know how to rest. And that's a good skip for you to Life is an adventure, and the path is unknown. And, uh, you know, really reaching out there and uh, enjoying life and living every moment. And for me, you know, every day is a real bonus, and I want to take advantage of that. So uh, hopefully the book and this whole experience will inspire a lot of youth and people uh, to enjoy the outdoors. Okay, that's it. Uh, I was the last person to know. I didn't know the Jansport uh, marketing team uh, decided to make a bobblehead of me. So that was a skippy out bobblehead that you saw. Did you have some problem? Yes, uh, socially, we uh, interact with about uh, 10 different organizations besides Big City Mountaineers, uh, Leave No Trace, uh, the outdoor industry, which is, uh, deals with a lot of uh, social uh, issues. Uh, there's, uh, uh, and we also encourage our Jansport employees to get involved in uh, many of the uh, different social areas, issues in their community. So, they do everything from helping build houses for uh, habitat, and uh, so there's different many levels in how we give back. Some is with product, some is finance, and then uh, some is our uh, knowledge. And then we uh, donate uh, throughout the year uh, many packs to students who can't afford uh, packs, and uh, so that's another way in a sense to give back in a positive way. Well, one, more, one more question. Uh, this is a silly question, but uh, you started business making outdoor products. Uh, does, your, does your company make any waterproof bags for students? We uh, All our bags almost are all uh, water resistant. There's hardly anything that's really waterproof if you have a zipper in it. But uh, from the very start to the day, our bags are very water resistant. Thank you. 
갈게요. 자, 질문은 하나씩만 받겠습니다. 하나씩만. 자, 그 다음 저기 맨 뒤에 계신 분, 안 있으신 분. 저 선물 주세요. 선물 주세요. 예, 예, Hi, my name is s u n g y u n g s h i n and I major in political science and international studies. Um, I wanted to ask you, over all your expeditions all over the world, is there any particular place that you would recommend our students to go to? The last part, if you could say that again. Oh, uh, is there any particular place that you would recommend us to go visit? I, yes, I know. There's no <laughs> one place, but I'll recommend you know uh, several. I think. Uh, You know, and part of you know all my experiences and all my expeditions, each each trip becomes uh, special, and uh, you know you learn so much in uh, so many different ways. You have the culture, you have the food, uh, uh, you have the new different environment, and uh, so for me, there's never one special place, but uh, I enjoy uh, many uh, new places. But uh, I love the mountains, but I also love the uh, Water. Last week, I spent a few days in uh, b o r q u e I'm not sure I pronounce it right. It's uh, south of Manila in the uh, Philippines, uh, on the water, on the on the ocean. So that was a very nice experience. But uh, also love the mountains, obviously. So I think anywhere you have the opportunity to travel around the world is very good for, especially uh, all you young students. Thank you. I don't have any book in s c h o o I don't speak much Korean either. It's okay. What's your favorite design of the school? Okay. Yeah, I guess I, I'm a little bit prejudiced now. We have a. Um, A special line called the uh, Scipio Collection, <laughs> and it's a very limited uh, uh, bags that we sell. But they have a heritage look on the outside, but on the inside there's contemporary features for iPads, laptops, electronics. So this line is was a very uh, special project to work on just recently, and uh, our partner here in. Um, In uh, Korea, they carry in some of the stores uh, some of the Scipio collection, and so I got to visit a couple stores yesterday where I saw some of the images you saw today, and then some of the special Scipio packs. So uh, you might tell them a couple of those stores. j e p o n 는 o 아니고요. The Scipio is a 2 0 1 1년 i 에 공 e 적인 e 터 a 했습니다 그래 the company is a VF Corporation. 어, 안에 속해 있어요. VF라는 회사는 세계적으로 가장 큰 패션 컴퍼니고요. 그때 이제 은퇴를 하실 때그 VF 코퍼레이션의 회장님이 이제 직접 그 선물도 주시고 그랬었는데 그때 기념해서 장스포츠에서 일종의 리미티드 에디션을 만들었어요. 가격은 뭐 30만 원, 50만 원 이렇게 가격이 좀 하이엔드 파이스인데 그 상품이 이제 제일 좋아한다고 개인적으로 네. 구매하실 거는 구매하실 분들은 가격이 비싸니까 말씀하시면 싸게 해도 <웃음> 우리나라에 얼마 없어서 아마 구매하실 수도 없을 것 같아요. 넥스트 퀘스션? 여기 계신 분? 네, 맞아요. 바로 눈에 I think, you know, my uh, first mentor started off with my parents, my mom and dad. They were very good about getting me in the outdoors and understanding that lifestyle. But they also were very good at pushing me at a very young age to go seek uh, adventure and learn to be independent. And then later on, as I showed you in the film, uh, Lou Whitaker, the mountain guide, was really my uh, uh, one of my other big mentors in life. And, All the skills he taught me, mountaineering, helped me in my everyday life. And uh, sometimes those problems, you know, weren't as so serious. And uh, um, I always, my best uh, motto is, I take our business seriously, but I don't take myself so seriously. So having fun and passion for what you do is so important. 
Thank you for your question. Yes, no, thank you. Uh, after uh, 48 years, uh, I decided that I wanted to spend a little bit more time with my family and uh, doing some of the things that I enjoy doing while I'm still healthy. But I also didn't want to totally leave Jansport, so uh, I work uh, so many days a year for the company. I'm still the uh, face of the brand, but uh, some of my work is at home on my uh, laptop. But uh, I love to travel. I'm a big organic uh, gardener. Uh, my wife and I like to go hiking in the mountains, and uh, I like uh, fishing. So I have many, many uh, different hobbies, and now I'm able uh, to do that. And as I said earlier, Jansport has just not skipped out. We have so many great young, talented uh, young people in the company, both uh, young ladies and young men, that uh, really, you know, carry that uh, role and uh, keep the brand uh, growing and very uh, healthy and positive. So it's been a very fun business. 자, 여기서 질문 조건이 있어요. 혹시 본인의 그 미래의 꿈이나 아니면은 앞으로의 장래에 대해서 조언을 혹시 그 개인적으로 듣고 싶으신 분. 자, 저기 저기 계신 분. 아, uh, I think you know I'm feeling part of that dream because I uh, also always have a vision and uh, part of that dream is being able to give back and uh, help youth in uh, different ways. Uh, I'm still very inspired by the product that we make and uh, that will be a dream forever that I still uh, still love the product that uh, Jansport makes. And uh, uh, also, uh, 